Um, so what we wanted to talk about is an introduction to cryptography, a new, hopefully soon to be released on re online resource um, that Jens Benat and I are currently developing. Um, oh, wait. Um, so this will be a three week MOOC about cryptography and it's aimed for middle and high school kids and also their teachers. It's probably starting the end of this year or early next year. So we're really hoping <laughs> that we get this rolling. And we, as I said, we will have three weeks. So the first week we call secret methods and the second week we call secret keys. So the first two weeks are about the his history of cryptography and a few other fun things that are not really related to that. And in week three, we want to focus um, on how can we actually apply these ideas today? Because now we have computers and some of the things that we learned back in the days are just not applicable anymore. So what does this have to do with me? Um, and how can we maybe overwhelm computers because they changed a lot of things in cryptography because they're just super powerful and fast. Um, so in the first week, we want to start really basic by looking at um, a cipher disk that Jens will show you in a second. Um, then we take, maybe in two minutes, <laughs> um, then we'll take a look at the um, Caesar cipher and monoalphabetic encryption. We see how you can actually easily solve the Caesar cipher and how you can then improve your um, encryption algorithm by introducing polyalphabetic encryption. We then take a look at um, Johannes Tremius, a guy who was uh, working in a German monastery that Jens and I also visited last week. So um, we will also have outdoor um, video footage this time um, from the actual plays in a monastery uh, in, where is it? Spornheim. Spornheim, yeah. Spornheim where he was working um, as an abbot. Um, so we will talk about him. And then we will also talk about his uh, invention of um, early steganography about hiding things in plain sight so encrypting them by not showing that there's actually something else there for example in a photo or so in the second week we'll which we call secret keys we will take a look at the visionaire cipher and we will we'll also talk about how um the um like solving enigma helped uh people win the second world war so we'll talk about structural exploits and then as i said we will also take a look at two fun things like um, steganography um, and how you can how you can hide information in audio files and how you can hide information in video or photographs and the last week we want to talk about how this translates to the modern ages. So first we want to show you how the internet works and then we will talk a little bit about private and public keys and Benat will tell you a little bit more about this week later. Um, we will talk about passwords attack, password attacks and how everything um, works today, um, how hashing algorithms work. And then we will talk finally about a very interesting thing that doesn't have to do with computers actually, but with people. So still today, the most vulnerable part of computer programs are often people running them or users of these programs. So we'll talk a little bit about social engineering. Um, we will do this in a MOOC format that consists of videos, um, short self-tests, so um, multiple choice, single choice tests, and also exercises where you can become active and uh, try out all the projects. And as I said, we're looking forward to finishing this end of the year and early next year. And Jens and Banat are now giving you a preview about what we plan to do. Uh, yeah, so uh, so this is about um, encryption. And you, know, you all know the Caesar cipher, but in this course, we actually kind of want to take it a little further. And we want to start you know, with the two people who are really kind of the fathers of of modern Western encryption. And, and this is uh, Leon Battista Alberti and Johannes Tritemius. And we're gonna start with Alberti, who um, I'm just gonna show you what, uh, wait, what are we doing? We're gonna start, he, he actually built these cipher disks. And we were thinking that the first project that we're gonna do is gonna use these disks and we're, and we're quickly gonna build them and snap themselves. So we have this, uh, custom block that writes something as a ring. It's just a little block that um, we made that, you know, just basically uses turtle geometry to, to do stuff as a ring. So we can, for example, we can say, uh, write, uh, and it's a list, um, right? Wait, we need to split. 
hello world um, by letter and we can give it a radius like a, a hundred and we can give it a size and it, it, it just writes it as a circle. And of course, what we want to do is, um, you know, we want to make an alphabet. Um, and so we're setting the alphabet um, to the, 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 the number 65 to 90, but as letters, so these are all the letters of the alphabet. So here's here's our alphabet. We just hide this and put this in here. And so now we can say, okay, um, yeah, let's maybe make it a little bigger. Let's let's try this. So here's basically our first cipher, a disk. So we want to turn this into a disk. So so we've just made it so we can take the pen trails. And we can switch to the costume pen trails. And then we're just going to clear this again. And now we want to write another disk. Um, same alphabet, um, maybe at some, some other space, um, 120, maybe a little larger. Uh, so here's another disk around it. And now, kind of the invention of, of, of Alberti was that if you turn them, you can get all the Caesar's uh, ciphers. So we could, for example, just say, you know, point towards the mouse pointer, do that all the time. And look at this. Now we can kind of turn it. And the way uh, Leon Battista did this, like you start, you know, with aligning the A to A and you start on the outside and you kind of uh, shift it by uh, where you want to shift it. And now for each letter, you have the corresponding letter until, and that was the invention, until you change the alphabet. That's why it's called holy alphabetic substitution, in which you would put another letter into this thing and you turn the dial and you get another Caesar cipher. And if you have many of these, you sort of defeat uh, the, uh, the frequency analysis of the thing. So this is basically Alberti's thing. And just want to quickly show you the way how Giannis Tutanius did it. So we have this alphabet and it has 26 letters. So if you want to get all the possible Caesar cipher of this, this is now very easy to do in SNAP, thanks to um, the new blocks. So we can actually reshape this into a table. And the table should be, you know, 26 rows of 26 columns. And then what we get is, you know, just a table with all the alphabet written underneath each other. And now we just want to shift it by one each. And the way we can shift it by one each is simply we add one letter and look at what happens. So now we can actually can turn this like this. And what we get is a tabula recta, uh, which, uh, look it up, is basically the way for polyalphabetic encryption. Okay, this is just to get your mouths watered. Now over to Bernard. Okay, so... In thinking uh, about how to explain uh, public key <clears throat> and private key encryption, uh, we were, I think this story came from uh, someone that the ends was talking to and, and uh, they explained to him uh, a way in which you could sort of share a secret with someone else without having to share, without having to uh, share a key as well. So let me put this in context. We have here, two people that uh, want to share a secret. And there is a third party, uh, an evil third party that wants to steal that secret. And you know, you want to send uh, this secret through mail service or however you want inside of a box. So the first idea that comes to your mind is, okay, I can put a lock in this box, right? But if I send the box to the other person, that other person doesn't have the key to that box. So I need to send the key as well. So if there's, an evil entity here looking out for the box, they may be looking out for the key as well. So there's your problem. But if you don't send the key, how can the other person open it? 
and that's the the whole idea is that well we begin by Yadga puts the powerful thing that she wants to send to Jens in the box and locks the box but keeps the key and that's really important she keeps her own key now I try to steal this I mean the evil entity tries to steal this thing but since there is a log in it so they cannot steal it and here's the trick Jens puts another lock on that box right so now he cannot open it yet but he has the key to that second lock right he doesn't have the key to the first one but he has the key to the second one and now he sends the box over to Yadga and the evil entity is like why are they putting so many logs in here what's the point right but now here's the trick Yadga has the key to the first one so she can unlock it and now she can send it to Jens and Jens does have his own key and the third party is left absolutely confused as to what these people are doing and how are they managing to exchange these powerful messages without him being able to intercept them. So this is just a very crude simplification of, of what um, public keys and um, private keys uh, look like. Very, very easy. But, but in a sense, the private key is the one that you are keeping and the public one is this lock that is traveling around and that everybody can see it's in plain sight. You can see it, no problem. Uh, the, the trick li lies in everybody having his own uh, secret key. I think that's all I had for you. So I think we're now uh, open for questions. I think we finished quite early, did we? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I was wondering if you if, did you consider whether you know this whole issue of uh, factoring primes was worth bringing into here and talking about it and connecting oh, up yes. with what you just showed. Oh yes, we did, uh, and maybe I'll, I'll let you guys explain it. I haven't looked into it completely, so I'm, I'm not sure whether I understood it completely, so I haven't looked into it. And I think we will definitely present it, although I'm not sure whether I actually want people to factor up primes themselves so we can just give them blocks so that they can do it. Because I think I found it very interesting when I first started doing things with primes. I didn't like it in school, but then I found it quite interesting that you can actually use it for things. So I definitely want that in the course. Um, and in how far we want to go with that we didn't discuss yet but I, it'll be definitely in there and with big numbers or just ordinary numbers no just ordinary numbers yeah yeah and actually we're trying it with small primes because they're easier to factor and to understand so the, the whole course uh, needs to be taken as an introduction to cryptography uh everything we're showing can be broken uh it's just the first steps to understand how things are working and as a disclaimer we're not by any means experts in security or cryptography so that's also our introduction to cryptography and security yeah there's a funny anecdote maybe we should share how this course uh, came to pass uh, <laughs> uh, hmm. Somebody at SAP was asking, like, do you have any course on, on data security and privacy or whatever? And we said, oh, no, but here's, you know, some ideas that, you know, we'd like to explore ourselves. Said, yeah, turn it into a course. So we thought, well, you know, rather than doing something about data privacy and protection, uh, let's do something on, on, on the history of cryptography. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, to Simon's comment, we are not going to make it quantum proof, but um, Jens has been talking to Stefan, who was part in making the AI course last year, and he's currently working on something, how to explain quantum computing with SNAP. So I'm not sure how far he is, but we will also take a look at that. Yeah, but that's going to be the presentation maybe at SNAP shop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So the MOOC, I think, is mostly aimed for beginners. So I think for the first time, we don't want people to actually build all the stuff themselves because we also want to explain a lot of things that are, that are not particularly fun to build. So we will just give blocks to people and they can use it and then they can build the abstract stuff out of these blocks. Um, and it's I think it's also aimed for middle schoolers because we want it to be um, so in Germany you have uh, in seventh grade so when kids are 12 13 years old they have uh, mandatory um, CS classes and security and encryption cryptography is a part of that so we definitely want it to be useful for these kids as well and at least to me, the aim isn't necessarily to solve encryption because <laughs> we don't know anything about it, but that uh, we discovered that there is a wealth of interesting projects and interesting ideas really um, in you know manipulating data and transforming data that you know has a range of variations to it um, that you can take um, kind of to iterate on the subject. And we'd also just like to use it as a pretense Program. And and a lot of interesting stories as well yes. about the history of the program. Yeah, so I really love the concentric circles of letters that you created using Snap. That's amazing, and it made me think that while you're rotating the inner ring. Um, you know how some graphics programs have a feature snap to grid so that there are certain prescribed points along which you can make valid placements. Could you, I, I, maybe it, on a whole other talk on the subject, but I'd love to see somebody implement that snap to valid letter position for rotating the inner ring. Is anybody uh, else? See, Dave, that? thanks for volunteering. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, so uh, as I was, you know, preparing this uh, Audetti activity, I was trying to, Jesus, something is going on here, can you hear this? I was trying to get the least possible thing to get it to work. So obviously uh, in the example that I showed, uh, it'd be great to have an offset to the mouse direction. So it doesn't always just point at the mouse pointer, but where you touch it. And you know, these are things we're gonna iterate on it. And those are actually fun things to work on in this project. So it's not all just about no, cryptography, but also about all the other kind of things that. And all of the exercises, most of the exercises will have a take it further part. So we could just put that there and let. Hmm. Good, thanks. 